Welcome back to another action figure review. In this review, we're going to be taking a look at the new Joy Toy officially licensed Warhammer 40k Space Marine Ultramarines Parmaris Librarian. This is the packaging that it comes in um, for a 118 scale action figure. This is a huge box. For comparison, here is one of the Studio Assassin boxes, which we'll leave here for a second. Front of the box, we do see the Joy Toy and Warhammer logo there on the top um, left. Recommended age 15 and up. Beautiful artwork of the character in the Warhammer information there at the bottom. Looks really, really cool. Here on the top, you can see how thick these boxes, that box really is. Just so you know, when you get yours, you'll have a, a plastic wrap around it. Had to remove that plastic wrap because of uh, the glaring of the lights. But there's the Warhammer 40k logo on the top. It's on the bottom also. Here on the side of the box, we have the information there, the product information, company information. Bunch of stuff there on the bottom left, UPC, which doesn't do any good. And age recommendations. Um, on this side, product information copyrights and stuff like that and pause and read that on the back of this box it shows product photos the name at the top the contents uh, some product images of the figure with the helmet the weapons um, unhelmeted version looks pretty cool so inside the box this is how it's packaging the clamshell um can see how all the parts are individually packaged there is tape on the clamshell um, which is usually not present but uh, it's there so looking okay, it looks pretty good so far you do get a trading card it's actually bigger than you used to seeing with the other warhammer figures inside a baggie let's look at that card it's actually a little um, cheaper card stock than we used to see in. Okay, here he is outside of the uh, clamshell. First impressions, just outside the clamshell, we have a little of a smell, like a plastic rubber smell. It's pretty, pretty present from being new. Um, handling, just to take him out, he's kind of, he's a little fiddly, stuff moving around a lot. Um, so let's take a look at him. This is head sculpt. Looks like this face is painted. Um, not sure if it's, you know, perfect, but it's not bad. He has a lot going on here on his head. We have some red, yellow, and black hoses going into the side of his head. We have some silver cylinder on the side there. On this side. It's uh, pretty much the same. He has, he has this gray beard. His eyes are kind of bluish with a gray eyebrows. Now, at the very top of his uh, armor here, we have this bird done in gold. Nice sculpt work there. Back of this thing on his top, we have the blue with the red. Like a dirty white wires and a stripe there and there. Some type of uh, cylinder there, coil maybe. We have the pig holes for his backpack, rocker pack. Then we have these two yellow hoses within black painted in the ribs. On the very bottom, well not on the bottom, but on the middle of the um, robe, he has this blue piece with a silver emblem silver gold emblem okay so turn him around here this shoulder pad looks amazing what is that orcus or something we have a gold skull with a ram horn looks very nice gold trim around it the white and black lettering there or the background with the black white background with their uh, black lettering very cool um here we are on this garland. We have another golden ram skull looking um, design. And on the back here, we have, we're losing pieces, um, 
three hoses. We have the yellow black, the red, and like a silver hose. All different um, diameters and styles of hoses. Just under the arm, we have some type of ribbon. It's really cool. And like I said, there's just a fittiness, fiddliness of this figure. So we'll get to that here shortly. On this side, we have that upside down M symbol with the gold trim. On the shoulder pad, same three wires we just looked at, all individual. And then we have the same gauntlet here on, the, on this side. Now this robe, very, uh, very soft. You have, you can remove the arms and take this off around the, around the arms if you would like. This part is sculpted, this part of the robe here. We have that beautiful skull and wings in gold sculpted on. This is actually rubber. On this waist here, he has a book that's removable. And he has keys that's also removable. They're just picked in and you can move them around. But it's, it's kind of a, really a pain to get them on and off. I have, we have a, uh, another skull and horns here on his belt. What fell off was there's a little lock that goes on this book right here. The book's really nice. Brown, white pages, silver, and this little lock here. And it just pegs in just like the uh, book does into the belt and the key ring. So that's so be careful don't lose that. That keeps falling off for some reason. And of course you can position that any way you want unless it falls off. Um, we look very fiddly. Keys, two gold keys, one silver key, silver ring. Here's some metallic blue right there if you can see that. The waist skirt is very soft. Blue legs. Um, armor here we have the ultra on his one leg. With the ribbon. Pickles on his feet. Now, like I said, this guy's really fiddly for some reason. My shoulder pad on this side, this wants to fall off. It's basically on a little joint inside. And then it goes into this piece. Anyway. Okay, for the articulation of the figure, we're going to have uh, you know, a little bit of hindrance because of this shell piece. You can turn that much. And that much. Can look down back and forth side to side a little bit. I think that's really gonna be a pain to swap his head out. This helmet version. Now for his arms, they are on these butterfly type things. You can see that. There's black cylinder. So you pop in, pop out. Gives it a better range of articulation, I guess is what they're going for. Um so there's a ball joint, your arms are T360. They go about that much. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll leave this one off. And then you can tell the difference in the crusties or both shoulder pads move because they're on that joint. But you know, it gives you about that much. But without it, you can get a higher range. Uh, they rotate 360. This rotation here 360 is really a pain to get, but it's there. I had to adjust mine. Double jointed elbows, which is fantastic range, way better than 90 degrees. Those hands are on those ball joints that go around, in and out, up and down, as it's limited to. So you can see. Um, like I said, very fiddly. Um, there is some like a diaphragm movement here. Here's the book. See, kind of this. This is like an all one piece here. This whole chest piece that sits down over like the stomach. So you can see that right there. So that moves around, and you have the 360 rotation, of course. The keys actually stay on better than the book does. See, there's the keys. Um, the legs can come up about this much. We have the double jointed knees. Which is hard to get because of the cloak. We have a, a, a ankle articulation down, up, side to side. Yeah, kind of 
kind of blocks it because of these, the way this is made. Give me that two articulation up. Pretty cool. Um, splits. Not too much, obviously. I should move these soft goods. There's the rotation there. Also, stuff move moves around a lot when you're playing with this figure. And you can see that the uh, pig there for the keys in the book. And it actually goes a lock again. Here's the pig for the book. They use the same kind of pig that's inside the shoulder pads. And the lock here is really a pain. I can see everybody losing that piece. Don't know why there's almost in overall. I mean, it's in there. And then you can see how hard this is going to be because of that soft rubber. Because it's a soft rubber and the way this piece moves around, it is really difficult to get this book back on. So I'm going to attempt for a second, just for aesthetics. And if that doesn't work, we're going to leave it off for now. Oh, we're going to leave it off. Um, should we try to get this piece back on? Pops right back on, but it's not the greatest secured. So, I'm going to try to get this book back on, and we'll take a look at the figure, a 360 look. Okay, he's about to get the thing the best we're going to get. Um, Didn't forget about this. This is really cool. Tips of the robe. We have a white skull and some kind of design above it. It's on both sides. On the outer, not on the inner. Um, it's pretty cool. For the most part, uh, I think there's a, just a tad too much going on here for the figure. I mean, they went above and beyond and trying to give you articulation and detail like crazy. Um, for, he comes with an alternate head. This is helmeted head. You have to remove the current head. Uh, it's just a pig here. We have the metallic eyes. Looks really cool. Metallic here on the top. We have those hoses, the red, the other one, the black. And we have the metal here on the side. Looks really cool. Back of it. No, both sides are different. So we have two hoses versus three on this side. Well, I'm going to give it an attempt to swap this head out. And let's see what happens. Okay, so I don't know what's going on here because I took off the head and you have this versus this. Did that piece come off? Is this piece supposed to come off? I'm not sure what's going on, but I figured I'd show you guys what happened. I don't know if I can attempt to get that out of there without breaking it. Yes. So there's the ball in there. And then we have this piece. Does that fit somehow? It's slotted because you have a slot right there in his head. And that's what that was. Pop right out of there. But that looks like a different diameter to me, just by eyeballing it. Yeah, I can't really get that, but I'll give you an idea what that looks like. At least, I'm not gonna fit it with that too much. That is a pain. There is no room to get up inside there. But that's what that would look like here, at least for a review. That's a pain. I'm not gonna waste a whole lot of time on that. So I'm gonna pause the video and try to put it back on. I tell you what, it is a lot easier just putting this black piece on that ball joint it goes on so much easier and then you just push your head on versus trying to do uh that piece so i gotta kind of figure out what this piece doesn't come out as easy as that one does so either we need to we need to glue that piece on or try to heat this to get this piece off i have no idea all right i'm messing around with this i think this is going to require some glue it's not broken it's just separated and then it's impossible to get back on. See how loose that is? 
to get that. I can get this piece to sit on, but the head keeps falling off. Let's see if I can do this again. Looks like that notch piece goes under the chin. It's not the one. And also the diameter of this is smaller. So that sucks. So we're going to do the best we can until I can get some repair going on here for my figure. Good thing it's not broke. It's just a little hug glue fix. So let's get through some of the accessories. Um, Here's his backpack, jetpack. We have the rotation here for the rockets. Some ribbon here hanging, the brown, the ribbon, some of the exhaust there. Two pig. Be very careful with these pigs. They are prone to breaking. So just make sure push them on a little bit like that. There goes that shoulder pad again. Um like I said, this is very fizzy. Playability is definitely a little irritating. But a lot of articulation. So it's the back of him. Okay, I did promise you guys a 360 rotation. Here you go. So you can move these around, but be very careful with those pigs. Some more angles. Stuff going on here. <sighs> I feel like I'm holding something very de delicate, actually. They're very cool for a lot of details. Just, I don't know how I feel about this thing. Okay. So, before we get to his sword, I have to show you his hands real quick. He has, let's see here, we need the right hand. We have a gripping hand. Like that and then what I noticed about this hand which is weird we have a that hand this hand has a metallic metal bluish interior gripping hand and it's he must have something to do with the uh, overall story of this guy because there is a lock again and it has it on that hand also which is cool I like that the pink that looks really cool is that like a metal hand lock fell off <clears throat> there's a head and it comes with this really amazing looking sword we have gold bottom black handle we have a skull again to give this guy really give him ownership to this sword because he has this all over his person um gold here Blue metallic blade, silver tip. We have this yellow design, the red wire. We do have this device here, black and silver, or more of a gunmetal. Even we got the eyes of the skull painted. But on this side, it's different. We have the red, blue, and gold there. So that's standing different on each side. So that's different only. Beautiful looking sword. Very right, cool. Must give it its uh, electricity, the way it looks on the box. And uh, this device here maybe generates that power. Beautiful sword. Now, <clears throat> bring this guy in. <laughs> it's very fiddly. Um, so we can get him to hold this. There we go. Can hold that sword no problem. And since our head's very, very uh, flexible at this point, he looks cool holding that sword. And then with the, there's arms that you can bring out. You can pretty much bring these arms right here. Bring it all the way around. And you can get double handed if you want. I'm not going to do it because this is a fiddly figure at this point. And the hand is not going to work for me. So I'll have to swap it out, but you can see the range that you can get because of the butterfly type joints. 
I just kind of got off it from the side, but in the back, kind of is what it is. You give one for another, I guess, for a figure articulation versus aesthetics. It's always going to be a battle, I think. Oh, this thing. And then, of course, that goes up there. And there he is. He's actually a very super detailed, a very cool figure, but man, it's a lot of fidd fiddleness on this thing. Um, a lot going on, so a lot of stuff trying to move at the same time. Mump falling off, uh, tolerances are a little off on this figure. Materials feel okay. I don't know, versus the ones we've looked at already, I think the materials, the plastic's a little different quality. Um, a lot of detail, tons and tons of detail, a lot of articulation. Just I think sometimes you can overdo something, and I think they've hit that. Lock fell off again, obviously. Got to stuff that back on. And this is movable, of course. You can bring this around. Those keys are really cool. I like those keys. Oh, lucky. Wonderful. Um, yeah, so you get a lot. Let's talk about price. This thing is around $50. This figure costs about 50 bucks in China. I've seen this figure on some of your American sites for up to $79.99. Now that's a lot. That is a lot for a figure, regardless if it's Warhammer or not. Um, even a 50 is pushing it, in my opinion. But uh, that's my opinion. The materials feel not as good as the other figures. The tolerances are off for the joints. They're a lot looser than I would really like compared to the other Warhammer figures. Um, materials, like that are, the rubber is kind of meh. It, it kind of just gets in the way. I wish it was a soft. If it was a soft good cloak, that would have been amazing. It would probably solve a lot of the uh, fiddliness because that cloak just gets in the way. And that rubber, if they came out with a different way to put that book and those keys on the belt, um, that would definitely been an improvement for a $50 figure. As for recommendation, I don't know. I... He has a lot going on. Aesthetically, he looks beautiful. He looks cool. I love the skulls. The sword is really amazing. Good quality sword. Um, the paint is okay. You get a lot of accessories and details there. The keys, the books, the locks, the, the extra head. Um, the wires are really, really cool. Just a lot going on. I, I'm just going to leave that up to you to decide if this is for you or not. Because I don't even know if it's for me or not, to be honest with you. Um, and this diameter is different. I don't know what's going to happen with that. It's almost like I'm going to have to pull that ball peg out of the uh, neck and shove it in and try to pop it on that way. But then you got to get in there with some kind of tool without damaging your ball peg. Remember, $50 if you got this in China, 80 if you buy it in the United States. Ridiculous on price. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this review and uh, shows you some stuff that you would uh, you know encounter if you purchase this figure. I'm not saying not to buy it because it's your money and do what you want. I'm just gonna hold all my recommendation for this because it's just I don't know. It's not sure the price is worth the which getting. Um don't forget to thumbs up if you like this video, if you like this review. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. That way you don't miss out on any more Joy Toy reviews or any other reviews we do. We do lots of stuff here on Black Skies Reviews. I really appreciate the support. Uh, share this video with your fellow friends and collectors. That way they know what they're getting if they want to buy this figure. Um, comment down below if you have any questions, comments, if you have this figure. Um, issues that you may have. And as always, thanks so much for watching. And we'll see you in our next review.